Welcome to the Pike County Report. I'm Brandon Roberts. With me as always, Judge Executive Wayne T. Rutherford and from the District 12 Highway Department, John Michael Johnson. Good morning. Nice to have you. Judge, let's start with you real quick. Um, you were the first judge back in the 70s and you've, you have got to see all these roads that we're going to talk about today uh, grow and become. Even when I was in high school, it took an hour to get from Belfry to Pikeville. Correct. And now it's half of that. I mean, it, you're right, Brandon. 119 is completed, 23 is completed, and today uh, showed John Michael to let the people know that uh, what's going on out in the, on the route of 460. But uh, once that's completed, and you'll give the date later, that the projection date of completion of 460, uh, then the interstate highways in this county and the ARC road program will be completed in this county. Uh, the reason we are the, one of the most progressive counties in the Commonwealth, and the reason we got uh, $580 million worth of contracts out in the county today, and today uh, John Michael is going to take us on a tour, a visual tour, of which 99% of the people in this county has not seen. They don't know what's going on because uh, of the way the construction is. It's a new, new route, isn't it, John Michael? That's it's correct. A, and uh, we know, uh, as we look around our country and see the development that comes on new road development, so it means the future of this county uh, is uh, John Michael with the, with the completion of these roads. And I think people are going to be astounded at the amount of money that uh, has, has being spent and has been spent on 460. And they're going to be astounded when they can, uh, can look at this PAC TV program and they can see exactly what's going on up uh, up 460 and uh, and I know that the governor of the Commonwealth only added to this three hundred thousand dollars for a study an economic development study around this road and now that's ongoing and it uh, it all the all of this property and of course the Kentucky legislature and the governor signed into law and now develop property along along the highways of Kentucky goes back to the city if it's in the city limits and they're capable of developing it or it goes to the county government for development. So today, John Michael, you're, you're going to take us through and let me say that John Michael Johnson is an expert when it comes to the road building in eastern Kentucky, especially in District 12. And I know by talking to Secretary and the present Secretary Hancock, uh, which I Called me yesterday when I was over to the uh, was over to the hospital uh, uh, what they had over there the ceremony they had and he called me while I was sitting there and had a conversation with him and uh, the secretary is elated that John Michael is going to bring the people of this county up to date uh, on what's going on by the Kentucky the transportation cabinet of the Commonwealth of Kentucky this touches not only our legislator John Michael our local legislators, but <clears throat> the state administrations, all of them up to now, and also our delegation in Washington. And you got to remember that uh, Senator McConnell, Senator Rand Paul, and Congressman Rogers is, is certainly a part of this uh, partnership yes. that you have under the ARC road program. And, and I've said this before, John Michael, the progress that we have in this county today, and we're not a distressed county, under ARC anymore. And the reason we are the most aggressive county in Kentucky is because of three things. One is a coal severance tax that I proposed back in the 70s that we got to develop with. And next is the ARC program, which in 1978 that was enacted in law by the United States Congress. And John Whisman, a Kentuckian, was the first executive director. And the election of Paul Patton, a governor from eastern Kentucky and from Pike County. Yes, sir. And that made the difference, and I'll add that, in strong leadership from the city of Pikeville and from county government yes, sir. over the years has, has brought to all of this to fruition. And John Michael, it, was just, it just happened that way, but there was your judicial building, a $33 million, your $33 million medical building, your $50 million in school, and now they've added on to that. And you're going to give us the victory doing this program, the, the amount of money that had been expended in regard to 
highway completing highway 460 yes sir so john michael i'm going to turn it over to you and we're going to start at that bridge that everybody looked at up uh, 460 around robinson creek and said out there it sets but you can't get to it and then we're going to get up to elkhorn city for the last few years they looked over there and they saw a bridge and they called it the bridge to nowhere remember? yes yes <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't know what you all had planned and what you had in mind and and which the future developments of that area in the Pike County hinges on it. And we're going to take you to the state line. Yes. We're going to take you right on to the state line. And, uh, and I, have, uh, I have said, and Brandon, I, you heard me, that uh, to me this will be the best program of educating people in the county that their future is secure in this county because of, of, of the dedication of uh, Mr. Dameron. And we don't certainly want to leave your boss out who's moved on to no, no, because uh, you and him worked as a team, and uh, and you all lived these projects. You are both of you are native here, and Brandon, they they have lived and breathed this project. Well, Judge, I think it's funny you say that because when we when Pack TV first got started, um, this was one of the programs you and I t discussed the, before we ever did our first program right. was uh, was doing one on roads. And John Michael, you were in my office yesterday, and you said the thing about roads is young, old, rich, poor. That's right. Everybody drives on the same road. Everybody benefits. Yeah. So, John Michael, take us on a visual tour of 460. Okay, Judge. Uh, again, thank you for the kind introduction. And, uh, you know, briefly, I, I grew up at Elkhorn City and uh, on 460, and they started uh, buying right away for US 460 when I was about 10 years old. Uh, back in the late 60s and early 70s. And actually down at the highway department, <clears throat> I have a full set of plans that follow existing oh. 460. Yeah. And uh, the, the project just kind of stalled. And then in the early 90s, we got funding to do a planning study. And we came up with nine alignments from US 23 to the state line. And we had one that followed the existing corridor and different alternates that did not touch the existing corridor. Well, one was selected in 95. And at that time, design work started on a 16 and a half mile roadway. And existing 460 does not touch the new 460 at any location. It's a totally new cross country route. And the first section was let to construction in 2001. And it was a section up Little Creek. And since that time, uh, today, over half of US 460 is under construction. Now, we start our tour with the intersection of 23 and US 460. And uh, that project uh, was let two years ago. Bizet Construction was the, was the contractor that was awarded the job. And some of the challenges with that one was to find a place to put uh, two million yards of excess material and without getting on US 23. Um, anytime that we have to put material in roadway trucks, our costs triple. Mm -hmm. And plus, it's a safety. You don't want the yeah. traveling public mingled with, with construction traffic. So anyone that's drive through US 23 there at the intersection, uh, don't speed. That's what I'm saying. You, <laughs> you, you, speed will, get a, you will get a ticket. There's one on either end. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but that project is about 80% um, complete. Uh, they are getting ready to start setting the beams for the bridge that crosses US 23. And so that should be scheduled to be finished uh, in 2013. And um, what was the cost of that? What was it? Ninety-nine million that contract. There you about? have a little spreadsheet that's got all those costs on it. Yeah. Uh, I think it's about twenty-eight million dollars. Mm -hmm. I just I weigh in on that here a second. I'm in awe of that project. I mean, I drive just driving by mm -hmm. it and remembering when they first started. Right, and then the way that it's come down, and now that it's, I'm just in awe of the just the sheer magnitude of that project. Well, and also, and people, you'd be surprised how many questions I get. What's that going to look like? And uh, <laughs> really, it's hard to describe it unless you have a map in front of you. And we have a website, and on that website there are pictures and maps that will um, let you see what it's going to look like when we're done. This is fully access controlled. There are no stop conditions. Uh, several years ago, we were approached about just having an at-grade intersection, very similar to mm -hmm. 119 and 23 yeah. at Walmart. And, you know, we knew if that was constructed that we would not get anything else. Correct. So we kind of dug our heels in and waited till we got 
the full access controlled interchange. Much safer. And again, there, there's no stops. That's the 20. You go around that uh, mountain that you're taking off, and you go around that, and then hit the hit the new portion. Yes, sir. You you can you'll cross the bridge. That's a two lane bridge that crosses 23. Correct. And going toward Elkhorn, and then if you're coming from Elkhorn going toward Virginia, mm -hmm. you'll use that same bridge. Right. And uh, then there's other ramps that 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 won't utilize that bridge. And that's the 28.8 million dollar project. Yes. The interchange. Yes. And uh, then once you leave that one, uh, you'll cross bridges, <clears throat> the, at, we call it section number one, uh, that goes up Little Creek. That contract was awarded to K&K &K Construction, and that was the first section of 460 that was let. And uh, it was completed about five years ago, and also that section has surfacing on it. But nobody's ever been on it because nobody's, no you can't bridge see it. access, you can't see it. No. Oh. And, but that takes you all the way through uh, Little Creek and Stagger Fork. Mm -hmm. And um, at the end of that project, you cross through a gap over into Greasy Creek. Mm -hmm. uh, that was our section two, and that section was awarded to, to Greer Construction. And that project was finished about five years ago also. Now the cut between Gre uh, Little Creek and Greasy Creek was 11 million yards. And that was right near the old Greasy Creek School. Yes, sir. Yeah. When, when you come through the, the cut and get down to the bottom of the ramp, we, there is an interchange in Greasy Creek, and the ramp stops right there at the, at the old school. Can you imagine what that will mean to those people that lives in that particular oh, area of Pike County? Uh, it'll cut off 10 minutes to their trip to Pikeville. Sure. 11 million cubic yards of... 11 million cubic 11. yards. And uh, one thing, if you get on the website and look at some of the pictures, um, there was enough when the transportation cabinet goes through, we buy mineral rights from right. the owners. Now we treat that as a waste product. Now the contractors, you know, they're paid to dispose of it. Mm -hmm. Well, the more coal that's on a job, the cheaper our price that we get. So the Greasy Creek cut went for under two dollars a yard, and that is just amazing in roadway work. And uh, again, that's a form of coal to road. Yes, sir. And uh, the the company. Again, got quite a bit of call off that property, which in turn saves the Commonwealth money and the taxpayers. Yes, and I can remember that we had the, the state accommodate us by upgrading two bridges on Wolf Pit where they were bringing the coal That's out. That's correct. If you remember. That's correct. And we had Secretary Nybert up here with you one morning when we discovered that, and Hatcher, the road commissioner, went up there that the bridges had been moving some. And on the county roads, uh, you, you all upgraded both of those bridges. Yes, sir. And um, now at Greasy Creek, um, we had to come back and let uh, another section. We had some problems with some, some homes. And, you know, when in our work, especially in these big cuts, you cannot buy enough right away. You know, we struggle not to take someone's home. You know, that's, right. that's very traumatic, especially when it's an older person. Right. You know, they don't want to leave where they've lived all their life. No. And, uh, but safety has to prevail. So we had to go back on Greasy Creek and buy five more homes. And we have let that section again and BizAct Construction was awarded the second contract and is under construction now. What was the amount of that contract? I'll defer to Brandon. He's got the list there uh, with him. That would be section three. Section, section three, three will be 23? No. Yeah. Yeah, 23.6 yeah. million. Yes. Yeah. And there are two sets of bridges. There's a set of bridges across Greasy Creek. There's a set of bridges across Gardner Fork. Correct. And then we had another set of bridges at Shop Branch, but our contractor is doing a value engineering. We're going to do away with the bridge and put in a culvert, and it saved the Commonwealth money. Right. And uh, so again, those are under construction as we speak. Um, now, after uh, you leave Greasy Creek, you go through another cut into Wolf Pit. Correct. Now, the Wolf Pit, we let that in two sections. And... Uh, you'll have to add both those together, probably around $50 million. And that was uh, Greer got to? Uh, uh, Bizac got both those Bizac sections. got both of those sections. Yes, and sir. we have a fill area that the county gets for, and for economic development. That, and it was about 65 acres. And the, other con the second contract was let. And that contractor decided, working with you all, that they wanted also to add to that fill. That's and correct. All and back. It made us more property. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, we'll have, again, about 70 acres for development, one big, huge tract of property. As, as you well know, Judge, is a rarity. 
in, yeah, in Pike County. Yeah, we was up there with you and Mr. Dameron and, and the, yes, and the, there's a forty-seven million dollar project there. Yes, and uh, now that project is at grade. In other words, the construction side of it is completed, and you are correct, Judge. They are hauling material from the Marabone section back into our waste area, correct. which again it raised it higher. And this, at this location, is one of the few right turns on 460. Now, well, that is right. I never thought about that. Uh, there are only three right turns, I'm sorry, three left turns oh, three, on this 16 and a half mile. It's full, it's partially controlled access. Very few right, uh, Very left few. turns. Yeah. Now, what about access for those people in Marbonne who have to come down the dangerous road where a lot of accidents has happened in, in past years? At, at Marabone, about a mile above Wolf Pit, a little community called Ratliff, mm -hmm. and we are constructing a ramp from 460 down and we'll tie into 195. Wow. And uh, again, if you drive up, up there now, and it's above the old, uh, where the county fire station is. Sure. And uh, you can see the work going on there now. We've started clearing next to 195. Uh, there will actually be uh, left turn lanes onto the ramp that, that takes you up to 460. Uh, that ramp's uh, over half a mile long. And uh, so you should be able to leave Maribel at that location and be in Pikeville in 15 minutes. Won't that be great? Yes, sir. And the safety factor there also. Yes, sir. And John Michael, you mentioned earlier about the the daunting task of um, putting debris somewhere or putting the dirt somewhere. Yeah. The, that is was, how do that's the greatest challenge the that we thing. face as roadway designers in Eastern Kentucky. Now, if you go down to the central part of the state, uh, you deal with traffic. Sure. That, that's their mountains. Right. Well, here, um, we have to deal with all the excess material. Now, the total excavation on US 460 is 100 million yards. Well, the, that is the equivalent wow. of five and a half pipeable cut throughs. It's five and a half times larger than the cut through. That's correct. And, um, and also, something else that's been a challenge since we started. The rules governing placement of fill have changed dramatically. Now, you know, we all know what a difficult time the coal companies have mining and putting their material. We face those same challenges. Now, we do get our permits, but we still have to jump, have to. go through the same processes that mining companies do. The, the environmental impacts, and we pay for stream damages. Correct. Um, on 460 alone was over $20 million. Mm -hmm. And that money's paid to U.S. Fish and Wildlife, and they'll go out and use that money to purchase property and rehab streams, mm -hmm. um, hopefully in Pike County. Hope it will. And uh, so um, uh, that is a benefit uh, to some degree, and but it's getting harder and harder to do. Um, I have spoken on if we designed 460 today. What would the differences be? You know, you look at 460 now, it's all side hill cuts. Correct. We generated a lot of yardage because we wanted to avoid the blue line streams and Correct. the homes. If we did that road today, today yeah. we would tear right down the center of the hollow. Mm -hmm. And it would be cheaper on us to go ahead and buy the homes and pay for the impacts down low than the impacts up in the hill because the core uh, puts the same value of the streams up in the hills that they do down below. Oh. So that's, again, that, that's the change just come up out the last 10 years. Sure. And uh, the, the one area that you talked about, the left fork of Wolf Pit, uh, is a waste area, or, so we call them excess material sites. Sure. Uh, that will be, again, about 65 acres of flat, developable property. And um, as you're aware, we created one of those on US 119, the Scott Fork Waste Area. Correct. That was about 35 acres. And uh, it's now been developed. The EQT building is extraordinary. I was up there a couple of weeks Correct. ago and took some pictures. And, and um, you know, I remember these. I, I would go up in there before you sure, put the first sure. load of material in. Oh, sure. And uh, it's just amazing what these places are going right. to look like. Correct. And uh, they will uh, be black topped. We will black top oh. the roads all the way through them. And um, there is another one there on Little Creek that the state is going to retain. It's about five acres. And we've talked about moving our maintenance facility there, which is at sure. Dry Fork. It's not the most convenient place in the world. Okay. And this will give us a location right on 460. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, that gets us, now that section from 23 to Maribone,
back in January, we let the surfacing contract, I believe was again about $28 million. Yeah. And that takes you from US 23 all the way to Maribone. And our goal is for you to drive from 23 to Maribone by the end of 2013. Yeah. Next year. Next year. Yes, end sir. End of next year. Yes, sir. Are we on, is that one on schedule? Yes. Good. Everything is on now, schedule. Uh, when will we uh, be able to get that uh, approximately 70 acres for development at Wolf Pit? Well, uh, you know the struggles they went through at the I Scott know. Fork. I know. Uh, once we uh, had come to an agreement to get it to you, it still took a year to do the paperwork. We, had the, <laughs> and, we have uh, a president already set with that. So yes. Uh, so we learned, our, we learned the, the process to go through sure. on that one. So I, I would hope that in a couple years, after we get done, mm -hmm. then we're able to turn that over to the county. Good, good check. And um, now from from there we'll go, we're going on up. We'll go. We hit John Moore Branch next, if I'm correct. Yes, sir. Now uh, we have, um, well, from Maribone to to Beaver Creek, we have three sections. Now again, you can't see any of these uh, because they're all back in the back in the hills. We did let a section. Uh, from Beaver coming back toward Pond that uh, they just started clearing trees on. Mm -hmm. And uh, that goes through the head of Jesse Branch. And uh, it will daylight there across the river from Beaver Creek. Now that project was 21 million yards. The largest project, earthwork project ever let in the state of Kentucky. 21 million yards. 21. Now what was the cut through? Seven, 18. 18? Mm -hmm. So we so got two projects. Uh, when two I go up to cut through they say, uh, Brandon, that it's the Second largest in the, this hemisphere, yeah. and Panama Canal first on that side. So this cut through will be third. This project will be second. Yes, and uh, the contractor that got that job was Cocosian Construction. I believe they're from Dayton, Ohio, and um, our yardage price was about three dollars a yard, which we felt was was very good. All of the material is contained on site, and uh, now they're. We do have one big field that contains all the material, but instead of having a big flat spot for developed, we're going to use that to build a road to the top of the mountain between Dunleary and uh, John Moore Branch. Uh, that's, that's the old Hawkins Strip job, yep. and there is several hundred acres of flat land up there that was mined years ago. You know, Michael, we worked with you, you all and, and our, our uh, legislators worked with you all at the, at the transportation cabinet on Jesse's Branch. And you all changed the design of the road to get it back to yes. private to 400 acres level land back on top of the mountain. That, that's well, correct. Well, it's privately owned, but it could be used for development in future that, years. That's correct. We could have had a site that was probably 10 acres. Correct. And then we would have had to go and found another location for 10 or 12 million yards of excess material. And also, our, our geotechnical group was worried about. The, the mines underneath, yes. that if we built this waste there, there could be some subsidence issues. So we decided to go ahead and put all of our material there and construct a road to the top of the mountain. Yeah. Which, was, which was great for the future yes. development of, of this area. Uh, and one thing, now going back from Pond to Maribone, we will be building a 320 foot tall bridge over Pond Creek. Well that's correct, that, and that was added w again with the help of, of Congressman Rogers yes. and our Senate, United States Senators and, and the Commonwealth of Kentucky, uh, the Governor and Secretary and, and, you, and the Transportation Cabinet to get that included in this ARC road plan because as knowledgeable as you all was, you knew that's the only way that bridge would ever get built. Yes. Well, now that's the drafting bridge. That's a, that's a, that's this under is construction. The, no, this is this the main is the line of the four sixty bridge. That's yes. the head of the holler. And uh, but to talk about the that's coming off, that's the four sixty bridge. Yes. Part of this project is the bridge at Draffin, which we call the Draffin Pond Bridge. And of course, you, uh, you just talked about the bridge at the head of the holler uh, on four sixty. Th that is a uh, unique situation. Um, <laughs> actually, when we had our first public meeting, <laughs> you, 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 you you came there. <laughs> And I think they were, that was before the election. Right. And uh, the public, the, the access to Pond Creek is terrible. Oh, God. And uh, dangerous. We have dangerous. different pots of money that, that we fund projects with. And uh, we tried to use uh, HES money, which was safety money. Mm -hmm. Well, we were limited to a million and a half dollars. We could not fix it for a million and a half dollars at all. And um, Mr. Ray Polly. He was uh, mm -hmm. Kevin Dam Kevin Dammer now holds assistant 
Deputy State Highway General Project Development. Well, at that time, Ray mm -hmm. was I in, in that position. And uh, we were struggling with how to build this 300-foot-tall bridge up in Pond. So we took 460 money and put it at Draffin. And not only are we fixing the, the existing entrance to Pond, we are constructing a bridge across the river and the railroad mm -hmm. up into Pond. And we will use that bridge to take our equipment up in to build this 300 foot tall bridge. bridge. So we used 460 money and it was almost a $9 million project. Yeah, that bridge, it's been led, I understand. That, that's correct. And they uh, actually, what you'll see right now is the construction of the piers on the Pond Creek side of the river. Correct. And um, so we took a roundabout way to get to Beaver, Brandon, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> but next, now we get up to uh, the mouth of Beaver Creek. Um, about, actually, when I first started with the cabinet, I went to a, a meeting in Frankfurt, and it was a rock core inspection. We had one mile of core laid out on the ground to look at, and the Geotech boys were designing our cuts. Now, if you'll drive up US 23 South, you'll see our cuts are pretty much vertical. Yeah, vertical, they are. And uh, that's a problem, as you can tell by the fence we put up there. Yeah. And uh, today, we load those cuts way back on the one-to-one. Mm -hmm. -one. It saves you on future maintenance. You know, you spend more now, but 30 years down the road, you yeah. don't have to go back and recut those walls like we are doing at many locations. And it's a safety factor locations. also that's because correct. you have, we're, we're prone to have slides due to our mountainous uh, terrain. Where are you uh, having to recut at you, um, right now, you well, said? Um, or had to recently? Well, up on US 23 South, mm -hmm. We had a large problem with rocks falling off because of those vertical cuts. And the, we where had, the fence is up now. That's correct. For, for, we had three million dollars. My car got hit there. Did it? With a rock coming off the hill. <laughs> uh, well, we had three million dollars to fix a twenty-five million dollar problem. Mm -hmm. The the twenty-five million was our estimate to go back and recut the walls, and we took our three million dollars and, and, and put up a fence built, and, and moved the road over. That's correct. Moved the road over and put a fence up. Uh, we were fortunate they were rehabbing US 23 at the time so we combined our monies, monies. Yeah. and uh, it was not the perfect fix but it it's is work, work, it, it works it, extremely, it well. extremely very well extremely well and um, but anyway at that meeting you know we knew that we had 16 million yards of material to dispose oh. of. Where are you going to put it? Well, a little old green me. Uh, I said, well, guys, let's go over into John Moore Branch. There's uh, just about four or five people that live up in there. You're correct. Well. Uh, Talk about that bridge to nowhere it got the, built. The bridge to nowhere that you <laughs> drove by. <clears throat> and uh, so we started looking at, you know, that's a good idea. You know, it's going to be a good development site because we always have development sites in the background <clears throat> and uh, of our minds. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Elkhorn City has nowhere to grow. Correct. We're just sandwiched in between those big tall mountains up there. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, the one thing I was thinking about, there was 32 families in John Moore Branch, not five or six. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, anyway, that got us rolling. It could contain all of our material. Well, how are you going to get it there? Build if a, a contractor had put a low water bridge in, he would have had to also cross the railroad. Now, anytime we deal, anytime we cross railroad property, you've got to have flagmen out there the whole time. You're hauling material for four and five years. Correct. Well. We constructed a bridge that was designed for triple sevens, mm -hmm. and it crossed the river and the railroad. So therefore, there was no need for the flagman. Correct. And we actually saved money by doing that bridge. And then once the John Moore Branch excess material site is constructed, you already have your access over to the property. Now, you worked with our county engineer, uh, uh, Summit Engineer, in regard to making that property of changing a little bit of design, that was your idea. That's correct. Your idea, and and so that we would have, diff, instead of it going straight up in the holler, you would have uh, a you series can, of flats. Series of flats, so they could we could use that for economic development. I, I couldn't see. We, we initially had a a six percent grade from from beginning to end, and uh, why should we construct something on a six percent grade, and let another company that wants to develop the property come and spend money on earthwork? And it does not cost us any more money to make those flats. Mm -hmm. And uh, so. Uh, Which makes it more attractive and to that's tr Charles, 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 Charles Carlton and Frank Hatcher <coughs> worked with our engineer, and he worked with you all. Yes. Didn't he? And uh, so <coughs> that's what we're looking at doing. And, and it would minimize the amount of earthwork that would be needed for anyone that comes in the future to develop the property. Correct. I do know that uh, we ha already have water 
across the river. Correct. And uh, that kind of worked out, you know, they were putting a new water line into Elkhorn City and we were just getting ready to start our project. So they went ahead and took the water across the river to avoid our construction. Mm -hmm. So the water is, is over there now. And we're in the process now of upgrading our 201 study on the sewer plant yes. that goes down around the mouth of, of Furls Creek that would serve that, uh, yes. that uh, area too. Now, at, uh, as the citizens of Elkhorn well know, that is, that, that is really picking up speed. Uh, we are impacting almost over half a mile of Kentucky 80. Correct. Right there at Elkhorn City. And uh, it is causing lots of traffic delays. That's the price you pay uh, to live in a construction zone. And um, hopefully, within a year, they'll have it so it's not, not quite as quite bad. bad. Yeah. And um, yeah, but once it's open, people have short memories about having to sit oh, there. Oh, that's wait. true. That that's true. And I and I, I mean I've driven through construction zones before, and it's right. again it's no fun. But when it's all done, yeah. you you forget all those. Right. That's right. Um, <clears throat> now up in, and we expect there at the mouth of Beaver to be done in three more years. Now, if you go up in Beaver, there is that, a one mile section that's already at grade. Yeah, and then you got the Stone Cold site that that be turned over to us the first one on the That's on correct. And, uh, and the it, governor governor's even been up on that side, if yes, you sir. remember. Uh, 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 that is paved all the way to the top. Correct. Uh, it would resemble uh, the the cut through the the field going up to the Y. Very similar sure. series of yeah, two acre flats. Yeah, yeah, and we've we've already had two <coughs> potential clients of the uh, companies <coughs> already been on that property yes. and looked at it. Uh, and Mr. Carlton had taken up there. Uh, we put about six million yards in that field. Six, six uh, we uh, moved, relocated eight families up in there. And I remember when I first went up in there, you know, I'm one of these, when I get on the ground, I like to meet the people we're impacting. Sure. That's just a, a personal thing of mine. And, and uh, you know, you just get to know the people. Um, and they can tell you a lot about an area. Unless you sure. live there, No. Uh, there's things that you don't know. And uh, so I, I made a lot of friends yeah. on, on this, hopefully no enemies, but uh, uh, now, once, and also there's two bridges that were part of that contract that actually cross Beaver Creek. Right. Now again, that section is done. Now, back in May of last year, we let the section at the state line, which also went to Kokosing Construction out of Ohio. At that time, that was a record. It was 12 million yards. Of material, twelve million yards, uh, approximately two miles in length, and um, they are moving right along. There are three cuts. There's one cut from Beaver Creek into Wolf Pen. Now Wolf Pen is the hollow. If anybody's been to the Breaks Park, it's the big curve. Correct. Right before you hit the state line, you go up in there and you see all kinds of construction. So there's a cut between Beaver Creek and Wolf Pen, and there's also a cut from Wolf Pen over into Grassy which is where the Laurel Shop is. I call it the Old Snake Pit. The Old Snake there, Pit. There in Virginia. Yeah, where you turn to the nerves. Yes, sir. And um, so if you go up there now, even if you drive up above the, the Snake there. Pit. I've been there. I saw it. Uh, Virginia is working on their section. Yeah, you go around the curve, they got a ro access road. And tell us about that contract. I think a Kentucky contractor got that. Uh, That's correct. That was actually a design build. $133 million? <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, um, Letting. I'll, I'll tell you a little story. When we first... Uh, well, a couple years into, into our 460, uh, Virginia was working on the Coalfields Expressway, <clears throat> and a portion of the Coalfields Expressway is US 460. Correct. And they had hired a, a big engineering firm out of Texas, and uh, they had some cost running $140 million a mile. Wow. Well, you know, that they call us, because we are actually in, in construction. And Virginia, that, that part of Virginia had no big roadway projects. All their four lanes were built years ago. Years and years. Now, while they've had four lanes longer than we have, theirs are not built near to the standards ours are. I mean, you, when, once you hit over and go through Pound, that's, that's nothing like a road that we not, have over here. No. Well, 58, was it 58 to Abingdon? Yes. I mean, you've got I mean, four lanes, but you have no shoulders, you've got right. curves, and uh, it's nothing like driving on one of our Kentucky roads, one of our oh, newer ones. We went up, Mr. with Kevin Dameron, uh, to the, and you all, to the, Groundbreaking mm -hmm. for that bridge, and they had the uh, the secretary in the state of Virginia uh, of transportation. He was there, and it was astounding to hear them talk about the length 
and height to that bridge. That in itself, am I right, will be a tourist attraction along with the Brakes Interstate. The tallest bridge the tallest in the state of Virginia. And the longest bridge, they told us that day. Uh, I, I can't answer that, but yeah. I know it's going to be the tallest. Uh, but when they called us... How tall is it? 320 feet. Yeah. And it's, they, they've started their pier construction as we speak. And, uh, but, you know, they, they call us over and they tell us they're getting their costs are $140 million a mile. And what this engineering firm had proposed was side hill cuts, yep. but you would have two lanes two, on solid, two, two lanes on two fill. And these were specially engineered fields. Very, very expensive, very expensive. to construct. Yeah. Well, they came over and they saw our construction. They saw what we were doing for 25 and $30 million a mile. A mile. Yeah. So they got rid of that contractor. Yeah. Saved them $100, saved that, them $100 million that's a mile. That's correct. <laughs> and, uh, but during the meantime, they're working on that. They call it the 460 connector. Now, they're coming in approximately one mile with four lane then they'll build a two-lane connector over to the brakes. Yeah. Well, they had a, a gentleman from Richmond. They were doing all this in-house, and they had a million yards of excess material. And they wow. thought, what are we going to do with it? What? And I started laughing at them. <laughs> you know, guys, it's just a million yards. You know, there's, you can put it anywhere. And, uh, but they, Virginia had established their center line. They hired a design-build team, which would consist of a, an engineering firm, a roadway contractor, contractor. a bridge contractor, they have an environmental consultant, a right-of-way consultant. And so this team, which Bizac is the lead, a Kentucky contractor, uh, yeah. and are finishing this project. And so, I mean, they bought all the, they're buying the right-of-way. Right away. They're the doing all the environmental work all with the utilities. And uh, the earthwork, again, I was up there earlier this week. I think probably the earthwork is about 60 or 70 percent. And then the bridge construction um, is probably about 20 percent. Uh, a small part of that project was in Kentucky, about 100 about feet. About 100 feet. About and, you know, you're crossing Grassy Creek with a 300-foot tall bridge. Well, you had 100,000 yards of material that was in Virginia. We let them bring it back into Kentucky. Now, you would have thought that would have been easy to deal with. Sure. It wasn't. Sure. <laughs> it wasn't. But we did it. We made it work. But, uh, but you know, if we hadn't allowed them to bring that Brings small amount over. into Kentucky... They would have had to travel down 300 feet, cross the road, go back up 300 feet. Uh, so, so that worked out. And, uh, the, and they should be finished with theirs in three to four years. And what we can do is open up 460 from Beaver Creek at Elkhorn City to the park. Sure. So hopefully in five years... That and, will be complete and, and, and under, from Elkhorn to the park. John Michael, under the studies that Mr. Old Quinn's that they have up there, shows that they once that's done, they get four hundred thousand people per year that come to the break. That that will double. Yes. Now they also added the water park, and then they add to that, which is going to put it over a million people. Yes. Having since when they'll have good access to the Brake Center State Park. Brakes Interstate Park, as we know, is only two of those in the United States, one on the New York, New Jersey border, and this one at the Brakes Interstate Park, authorized mm -hmm. by Congress, uh, which is operated by a board. I know that the uh, members of the physical court, when they were building the cabins up there, we had to prove the cabin. Well, that's in the, that's in the federal act that the local governments in Dickerson County or Buchanan or Pike had to prove any anything that developed up mm -hmm. there. So well, they had to come to us, we had to prove the parking. And and then and, and the magistrates would say, well, why in the world we have to do that? And the county attorney would say, well, it's a federal act. We have to do this and we need to cooperate. We need to develop and there's no problem. But but the Brakes Interstate Park is, is, is the centerpiece of the economic development as we look at tourism in the future. And if we would have never had this if we didn't have the visionaries I'm talking about the visionaries in I'm talking about the visionaries like you, Mr. Dameron and others who was dedicated and and to to work with, with our legislators on the state level and the federal level and to bring this all together. And uh gosh uh, Well you know Judge I know this show's about roads, but <clears throat> and this is I think directly in uh, linked to roads, what uh, what could this mean for the city of Elkhorn City? Oh Lord! I mean, as far oh, as oh gosh, just, they've been. I mean, they're, as John Michael said, they're landlocked, aren't they, John? They're Michael? landlocked. Uh, this, when 460 is completed to Grundy, which they hope to be done about the same time we are, but, by 2020, yeah. our, our target completion date is 2020. 
and it will totally change the face of Elkhorn City. I mean, I don't see how it could. I mean, it's just then you go over in Virginia, and they've got that mileage of coal to road. Road. Is that the one to Hayside, or is that the one that? That's the one that goes. Well, the coal to road will end up at Pound Gap, and that yeah, that's that's uh, Coalfield Expressway. Coalfield Expressway will end up at Pound Gap. And our access to the Northeast on 77 mm -hmm. in future years will be driving over to Goes Pound to on a four-lane road. All the way to Beckley. And, and all the way to, all Beckley. to Beckley. Yeah. Now, a piece of that, like I said, <coughs> is US 460. Now, from the state line to CFX is about four miles. Mm -hmm. And then I believe it's another six miles on to Grundy. Correct. Now, VDOT, Virginia Department of Transportation, is partnering with the coal company to build portions of that roadway. Well, you know, when you go up there and look over into Virginia from where, where your contract ends, Grundy's not too far up through there, no, is it? No, You're it's up about, on about eight miles. About, isn't, that, isn't that amazing? It's amazing. Eight miles from that. And you would never first visualize that. And I didn't until I was educated by John Michael and said, oh, I said, how many miles is Grundy? Eight miles. So when all said and done, the trip from Pikeville to Elkhorn City is going to take what? Uh, Fifteen minutes. Amazing. Sure. Uh, it'll faster, be um, faster than about 20 miles. Memory. About 20 miles. And we're going to end up with about 380 some acres for future development for the county. Also, uh, in part of this $300,000 that the uh, state administration made available to us for the study, includes the property of the great, the uh, Grapevine uh, Corporation that's being donated to the county, and that's part of the development too of of the 460 uh, study. We know so it gives us over 2,000 level acres. Imagine that. Who would have ever thought? Just how long ago was it when uh, our friend from over Blackberry come in and asked us about putting a, uh, already wanting to put something up on the, when 460 gets finished and gets we get that land, he, he's already asking about putting something up there. He wants well, we're talking about 460. We, they have a National Association of Horses, mm -hmm. and I know your family have been involved with the horses and like everybody in, this, this, in Central Appalachia. But uh, yes, we have in our comprehensive plan uh, to put a uh, indoor horse ring. And we have a letter in the file in my office which says uh, that uh, if we build one, there, a national association will come here mm -hmm. and, and have their show because of Central Appalachia. You know, we read that sign, the, the horse capital of America down in the bluegrass. Uh, there are more, that's right, there are more horses. <laughs> Here in this eastern Kentucky, than they are in Le in Pike County, they are in Fayette County, and that's all because of 460. All, all because of 460, and that's in the plan. Now we don't have to use this property that's for development for that. We get some other sites up there that's not been compacted. Yes. Um, now we will also <coughs> have an excess material site just inside the state line, about half a mile, be about 30 yeah. acres of flat land, yeah. and we've always envisioned that that's your welcome to Kentucky. Well, we've, as, we've envisioned that as, as that, yes. tourism. We have it on a, the comprehensive plan. Complement the park. Co Complement the park and compliment mm -hmm. coming into Pike County. Welcome. Oh, a welcome center. And we've already made we've contact. Already been we've, we've already been, been talking while. to the Department of Tourism and Mrs. Sparrow and Marquita her Sparrow, people yeah. about uh, do your planning now like our comprehensive plan has it, and we gave them a copy. And, uh, now, I want to back up just one little bit. I've, I've gone through the whole Correct. construction with the exception one last. The, the last piece that will go to construction is uh, twin bridges at Beaver. Yes. These bridges are uh, going to cost about $60 million. Wow. 2,400 foot in length. And actually, when it crosses the river, uh, about 220 foot tall. That's where the railroad bridge presently comes over to Beaver and goes That's used correct. to go up Beaver. That's correct. And uh, so uh, it goes from mountain to mountain. And, and we are That's a reason. Give your projections on the completion again. and That's one reason it's moved up to, 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 20, to 2020. 2020. We, just, we just started our design work on, on that bridge. Uh, <clears throat> we would actually try to start uh, two years ago and You've got the old federal mines underneath. Correct. Uh, now our, that our, was a shaft mine. Yes, sir. And, Good. you know, our geotech tends to be very conservative. And, you know, you don't want to build a $50 million bridge mm. or bridges and worry about subsidence. Right. So we were going to drill and make sure that there were no issues, or if there were, how do we mitigate it so we wouldn't have any problems down in the future. Uh, it took us a year to get across the railroad. <laughs> and, uh, but we finally did it and, uh, and got it drilled. So that design process has started. 
Now that's a two-year design project. That's the old Caudill Ward. Yes, sir. Mines at the shaft mine. Yes, sir. Probably the first of that type of mining done in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Now uh, we know that over in Virginia, in Buchanan County, and others, all of their coal is not up in the mountains. It's subsurface that's always correct. been. But over here, our coal, easy to get to, was always in seam mm -hmm. up up in the mountains. Uh, actually, you know, if you go into John Moore Branch, you'll see that we made a big cut on the right side. And you can see the old mines, mm -hmm. we, we actually cut through them to, put, to relocate the creek. Uh, but now when that bridge, again, we'll probably put that to construction in 2014, and it'll be at least three, maybe four-year construction three, project. Three, three or four and years. that will be the last piece of the 460 puzzle. And those will be extremely large bridges. Yes, sir. Uh, and one other thing that, that we did, uh, when we purchased the railroad right-of-way going up in Beaver, we were starting, you know, the bridge, the, rail, yeah, the railroad bridge that crossed the river. Correct. Where our right-of-way started mm -hmm. on the 80 side of that bridge, and we bought about two miles going up in Beaver. Well, the railroad said, well, you know, you get that bridge for free. Mm -hmm. we, we, we don't want it. And it was just had to be torn down. Well, I started thinking, and uh, I talked uh, people into letting us redeck that bridge. Correct. We're going to use it for construction access. For US 460, and when it's done, and Brandon, that'd be to see we'll us. turn that over to the. Oh, yeah. That'd be to see us when it's done. Yeah. Uh, well, the, <laughs> so actually, there the after. city of Elkhorn, city of Elkhorn has there. agreed to take it over. I hope they have. And uh, uh, we agreed to take the old bridge yes, up, up the upper one, but they, I'm glad that they. This will be uh, able to do that. The beams were fine, and so we're we're actually in the process right now of taking off the old railroad ties. Sure. And going to deck it, and it'd be a one-lane concrete bridge. Uh, and I would hope that the city of Elkhorn can work with Burwood. They own Dunleary Bottom. Sure. And that's about 20 acres. And that would, I, I personally, I envision all kinds of things that could happen could there. Could happen over. A little fun run from Elkhorn. Anybody could float from Elkhorn down to Dunleary. Sure. You'd have campgrounds, walking tracks. There's just so much you can do with so that So much property. you can do. And then you would have John Moore's Blank for economic development. Yes, sir. But, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here with two people who are more passionate about road construction than, than I possibly than I've ever met, but um, of course it benefits me too, so I'm excited. Hey, you can add that. Kevin Dameron to that list. Can't you? <laughs> oh, yeah, yes, I'll add Kevin. I'm, yes, sir. He's, I'm sure he's here in spirit. But uh, uh, tell me about, uh, real quickly, because we're about to wrap up the, because I know you could talk about 460 all day. I know it's oh, your, I, that's I've your got baby. Stories and stories and stories. <laughs> but uh, tell me about $429 million. That is the amount of money spent to date on US 460. That is all, that money comes through, uh, it's APD money, Appalachian Project Development. There is a 20% state match. So the state of Kentucky has come up with 20% of that money. Correct. Now that does not include the money have we have spent on design. Correct. Over $20 million. Right of way, and I'm going to guess was probably close to $20 million also. Oh, and utilities would have been about 10. So when you add those numbers into it, that's what we spent two days. Now, now the right of way, utility, and yeah. design cost, that's all 99% done. Again, we've, we're still designed the bridge over uh, there at Beaver and the one up in Pond, and that'll have it all designed. And um, then the balance left is probably about $250 million to complete it. Now, we went through a time there, we didn't have any state match. Let's talk about Emily Lee before okay. we go any further. Uh, <laughs> Mrs. Lee lives over in Pond, and uh, well, she's a little bitty lady, probably yep. don't weigh 100 pounds, so right. wet. And uh, <laughs> she was a true advocate for improving access to Pond. No well, we named that. the bridge after her. We did. Well, your gosh, it ought to have been, hadn't it? That's <laughs> right. She, she, uh, <laughs> when we lost our HGS project again, we could not fix for the million five. And, and right. that HGS money... All phases. You had to do your design, construction, right away utilities for the million five. That was your limit. When we couldn't do it, she was disheartened. I know. And so she got the governor's email address. She emailed. <laughs> she, she used that computer. Said she had somebody show her how to do it. That's right. And yeah. uh, so she got the governor's ear, and that's when the governor told Mr. Polly, let's see what we can do. Yeah. And that's when he came up with the idea, which was brilliant, to use 460 and money. And, and, it's, and the governor was here to unveil the sign. That's but, correct. Yeah. And uh, Miss Lee, even, you know, any time that you try to expedite a project, it takes longer. It never fails. You try to speed it up, it takes something, something happens. Some, 
uh, you know, we had a, a, a tract of property in the court system. Correct. Once it gets in the court system, there's not a thing. We, we're at the mercy we, of the court. Yeah. And, uh, but we finally, you know, we left the project the same time in May of last year. Well, the contractor just started working. Yeah. She called me, John Michael, how come they've not started working? Emily, honey, I don't know. You know, that's Thursday. They can start whenever they want. They finally broke ground broke and got ground. started working. She, and, should be, uh, she should be happy. Well, yes, and she's, she's a fine lady. She's a fine lady, and, and she organized that community. Yes, she you did. always had good crowds at the public here. Yes. Well, Judge and, and uh, Mr. Johnson, let's end on that note uh, with our 460 program. Uh, thank you for watching the Pike County Report.